And welcome back to Hannity tonight. The president's apparent unease with the Catholic Church is rising to the surface yet again. Now, you may remember that he angered bishops in the U.S. last year with his contraceptive mandate. Now, comments that he made earlier this week to students in Northern Ireland are stirring up controversy. Listen closely as the president appears to compare segregation to the Catholic school system. Issues like segregated schools and housing, lack of jobs and opportunity, symbols of history that are a source of pride for some and pain for others, these are not tangential to peace, they are essential to it. If towns remain divided, if Catholics have their schools and buildings and Protestants have theirs, if we can't see ourselves in one another, If fear or resentment are allowed to harden, that encourages division. It discourages cooperation. Well, if Catholics have their schools, that encourages division? Oh, really? Now, moments later, the president seemed to double down on his analogy by referencing the American Civil War. Watch this. Our Civil War was far shorter than the Troubles, but it killed hundreds of thousands of our people. And, of course, the legacy of slavery endured for generations. When I was a boy, many cities still had separate drinking fountains and lunch counters and washrooms for blacks and whites. Joining me now with reaction to the president's unusual comparison, best-selling author Ann Coulter. How are you? Fine, thank you. Reaction? Uh, I have three quick points. One is, um, what a surprise that Obama is attacking America while he's abroad. Can you imagine Angela Merkel coming here and talking about, you know, what the Germans were doing in the 30s? Um, point two, um, um, Obama himself spoke at a segregated school, and it's not like you have to go back. Oh, well, he was, he was just a community organizer back then. It was last month he spoke at Morehouse College, an all-black, all-male college, which, by the way, I'm in favor of such colleges. It can be useful to... to pedantry to, to learning things. Um, and point three, if your mission is to prove that, that uh, Obama is an even worse president than Jimmy Carter, mission accomplished, let's talk about immigration. All right, let's take a little trip down history. Now, I don't often quote the New York Times, do I? This better be about immigration. No, this is about <laughs> Obama. He did an interview with Nicholas Kristof in the New York Times. This is what he said. I was a little Jakarta street kid, he said in a wide-ranging interview in his office. Oh, yeah, he, he once got in well. trouble for making faces during Quran study classes in his elementary school, but a president's less likely to stereotype Muslims as fanatics and more likely to be aware of their nationalism if he once studied the Quran with them. Now, Mr. Obama recalled the opening lines of Arabic call to prayer, reciting them with a first-rate accent in a remark that uh, seemed delightfully uncalculated. Quote, it'll give Alabama voters heart attacks. Mr. Obama described the call to prayer, one of the prettiest sounds on earth at sunset. Now, he went to a Muslim school. So is a Muslim school, is that segregated? Does that encourage division? Uh, that is an excellent point. And um, all of those school children, um, particularly if they're if they did not complete the school and they have no education and no schools, they will be let in under Teddy Kennedy's 1965 Immigration Act, whereas the Irish children he was speaking to, if they go on and get degrees in engineering and become a doctor, they will not be let in under Teddy Kennedy's immigration law, which is the most important issue facing our nation and contrary to some other um, not you, Sean, television hosts. Um, look, this isn't a done deal now. And I think a lot of people are being led into complacency um, by some TV hosts saying, oh, yeah, this is going to pass. This is going to become law. John Thune said today, the calls are coming in and they are all on one side of this issue. And I didn't hear everything my favorite congressman, Steve King, said in your prior segment. He has totally been leading the way on this. But um, I hope it is. And, and I think people, when they call their senators, should know this, or rather member, or members of the House. We want no House bill, because even if they pass just a fence bill, just an E-Verify bill, it will go into conference with the Senate bill, come out amnesty, and I'm sorry, but idiots like Paul Ryan will vote for it. You add that to 100 percent of the Democrats, it will pass right now. Um, and, you know, there are a few other, I mean, the, the sophistry being used, it's strange how whenever Republicans start pushing liberal ideas, they, they they start engaging in liberal argumentation techniques, i.e. lying, um, coming up with silly arguments. Let's just take de facto amnesty. 
Um, well, okay, we have de facto amnesty for murderers in America because thousands of murderers do not get caught every year. Well, do we grant them amnesty? How about tax people who don't pay their taxes? I'm having a hard Are time. Are we giving them de facto amnesty? I'm having a hard time understanding. Do doesn't America have the right to uh, uh, be a sovereign country and secure its borders? Why is that even controversial and why don't you do that first? No, absolutely. And it's going to take a while to have it done. <laughs> As I've said before, offense isn't that complicated. We've been obliged to build it all this time. The fact that the fence is not being 100% built, that E-Verify is not being put into place, shows that they're absolutely not serious. And the only reason the Democrats want this, the only reason is because it will help them electorally. Um, and this idiot argument that... that uh, and that somehow the Hispanics who live here are going to hate Republicans more. Look, every poll that's taken, not only the 30 million new illegals, um, every poll says 80% of them are going to be voting for the Democrats. This is why the Democrats want it. They don't care about these people. But if we don't give them amnesty and they don't become citizens, they can't punish Republicans. So we're talking about 70% of 8.4 percent, 70 percent are the percent that vote Democrat already um, of Hispanic voters. Only 8.4 percent of the electorate are Hispanic voters, and the argument is they're going to dislike Republicans more. They're not voting for us now. You know what? You know what I don't understand here. Every it's like Republicans are suckers, and I don't trust the government. Every time there's a talk of a tax increase and spending cuts. You get the tax increase, never get the spending cuts. You no, always get, right. You always get the you always get the amnesty, never the border control. No, that's right. That's why the um, patriotic House member's position has got to be until the Senate is in Republican hands, preferably Rubio free, sorry, um, we're not even going to pass a bill that mentions immigration. And, and, and you should know that John Boehner secretly wants to pass amnesty because his idiot consultants are telling him, oh, it's going to be a great boon for Republicans having 30 million voters who will never vote for a Republican. Um, and, and, but they need fig leaves like this amendment in the Senate today. Um, it's an utter fig leaf to pretend this is going to secure the border. What, what, one border agent every thousand yards? All this is is more government workers, more pensions. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't shore up the border. It's a fig leaf to allow Republicans who want amnesty but don't want their voters to punish them. Punish them, voters. Right. This, we do not want this amendment. Good to see you. Coulter. Thank you. Good to be Thank in the so studio. Much.